Hi, my name is Trudy Gastrock, and I am a labor and delivery RN at Kaiser San Francisco. In order to start with a cystoscopy procedure, we need to grab all of our supplies. Grab the OR guidebook, either located at the LMD desk or one in each operating room. Open the book and look at the menu. You can look at number seven, which is equipment, which lists cystoscopy tower for bladder injuries. Turn to equipment tab. This is where you will find your materials that you need to collect and instructions to complete the process. First, grab the OR tower, camera tower from each, either each OR. Bring it to the OR that you are going to use. Next, you wanna plug the cystoscopy tower into the outlet. Turn on the cystoscopy tower. Turn on the screen. Turn on the camera. And turn on the light source. There are four things that you need to turn on for the cystoscopy tower. Then grab the camera sterile tray, and this is located in the back area where all the sterile equipment is kept in labor and delivery. Then you will need the Eurogyne, AKA transgender scope from sterile processing. Three liter normal saline bag, single bag irrigation setup, Allen stirrups, sterile drapes, perigyne pack to cover the stirrups when you're doing the procedure. All supplies are also available in the operating room cabinet where the Allen stirrups are kept, except the urogyne scope. The urogyne scope will need to be retrieved from sterile processing. Here is a picture of where these supplies are kept. Now we will go through the instructions. And don't forget to grab your fluorescein and give that to your anesthesia provider. They will inject this IV for better visualization of the ureters. Now, Danielle will grab the sterile camera tray and open it in a banana style fashion in a non-sterile area. She will give this to any sterile team member, likely the scrub tech. Trudy will come and open up the Eurogyne scope. AKA transgender scope. All right, now I will put together the cystoscope. So that's a 70 degree lens. And I'll have the bridge and the sheath. The bridge connects to the sheath. And then the lens goes through the bridge and through the sheath. And locks into place. <laughs>
Notice how it says up on the top of the cord. Face that part upwards. And then grab the light source and you need to unlock it, put it in about halfway and then relock it. Make sure that you press the standby button to ensure that it turns on the screen. And now you know that it is on correctly when you see the light cord light blue. <laughs> now grab the three liter normal saline bag and hang it to gravity on a tall IV pole. Open the tubing sterilely and hand that over to either the scrub tech or the MD who is sterile. They will give you the spiking portion of the tubing to spike the three liter bag. We will remove and spike. You do not need to prime this bag because they will allow the normal saline to drip through the front of the camera tip before entering it into the patient's urethra. Thank you, Kate and Austin. Go. Troubleshooting. Notice how the screen is multicolored. And notice how the camera entry point is not lighted blue, it's green. And we possibly need to push it in a little further, a little harder. Thank you, Danielle. And now it's blue. Let's look at the screen. It is ready for use. Blue camera light around the entry point blue light source around the entry point and blue all the way to the camera site. Our production team credits go to our camera woman, our very own labor and delivery nurse, Amy Gendron, fourth year chief resident, Austin Freeman, Kate Rhyme, our second year resident, labor and delivery nurse, Danielle Shipley, Audience team members, Lisa Blades and Daniel Aries. Our last labor and delivery nurse, Trudy Gastrock. And the narrator, Sarah, Sarah. Abdul Kader. Thank you.